everyone, thank you so much for joining me for Let's Experience a Mortician's Tale. This came out a few years ago. Uh, it kind of came and went a little bit. Uh, however, it's really stuck out to me for its emotional intelligence, which is why I really wanted to cover it here for the Let's Experience series and really look at what this game can do for us psychologically. I have played a couple minutes. However, I did want to start a new game. Uh, September 14th, 10.15 a.m. So this game really stuck out to me because it is uh, one of those games, again, and one of my... I really love it when a game... <clears throat> I really love it when a game kind of makes you second guess. You know, what is a game? What constitutes a game? This is very slow. It's going to be a slow, quiet, but emotional playthrough. Uh, I really, really wanted to share this. Um... This game is all about being a mortician uh, and the day-to-day kind of life, uh, the topics that come to mind, you know, the kind of stuff that we don't usually think about. Uh, I will uh, be kind of cutting it a little bit in terms of the emails. I know the emails are a large part of the gameplay, but uh, I did kind of want to uh, keep things moving. This game is very, I think, important. It's a really good precursor to what we could use video games for in terms of educating ourselves about these kinds of topics, about death, about loss and grief and how bodies are handled, because uh, we don't think about these things. We really avoid it. And playing something like this, it's so calming, it's soothing. You know, I love like just the tea here. I think it's it's really important. So here's our uh, today's tasks um, from the boss to us. Hello, Charlie. Hope you settled in okay so far. M Matthew sh should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you're really friendly. He's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. Your first body is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a close casket funeral so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little bit more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier, if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Mrs. Garcia, I do think it's important to take time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I would I like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Mrs. Garcia in the prep room. So right off the bat, uh, I do want to talk about my mood uh, with this. Um, I do experience, and just full honesty, I do have some death anxiety, uh, and I, I have experienced it because uh, I lost my mother about um, five years ago. And you know what actually hits kind of hard is the fact that um, our, first, our first body here, her name's Mrs. Garcia. Garcia is actually my family name. Uh, and so that, that does hit a little bit. Uh, and we can see the email chain here. Uh, of course, we're happy to oblige your request of no embalming for a closed casket. I'll ensure our funeral director receives your request. Uh, so if you hear my voice kind of doing like a funny thing, it's just because I'm, I'm really muscling past it. Uh, and... But I think it's it's super important, and I think it's good for me to play this and to actually share my experiences. Uh, good for me as a person, and good for anybody else who might be going through similar things, might have gone through something like losing a parent. Uh, and you know what? I think that this game could actually be super helpful. Um, but yes, so uh, this is from Mia. We're happy to be with Rose and Daughters for my mother's funeral. We understand that there are usually procedures that must be followed in these situations, but if you could kindly not embalm my mother, that would be greatly appreciated, and we will proceed with a closed casket for the service. I just know she wouldn't have wanted her death to have any negative impact on the environment, and since she fought so hard to beat her heart disease and to live healthily, it would be a shame to have her final moments, uh, to have her final moments to be counter to the way she lived. Thank you for everything, anything you can do to help us in this matter. And then we have the monthly newsletter at funerals. Don't use your cell phone. Don't be loud and obnoxious. Don't get drunk. Happily reminisce. Give condolences. Dress appropriately. Give a gift or sign uh, the registration book. 
So again, sorry, I won't be reading everything. Uh, I did kind of just want to take time to feel this out, right? Uh, the Let's Experience series is all about <clears throat> what games do for us emotionally. And so that doesn't mean you have to be blind to the player's personal experiences. Oh, did I not finish a thing? Oh, I was supposed to respond. Um, you know, our experiences with games are all about our personal experiences uh, before we came into the game. What are we walking into the game with? I happen to be somebody who has struggled with grief and loss. I lost my mother when, um, just after I turned 21. And uh, since then, although, you know, I feel like I've, I've really come a long way, I still do experience some death anxiety. And that's something that I think a game like this, um, I'll get to this in a moment, a game like this can be so important because there's not a lot of positive space to think or talk about death. When I had to talk about my mother's death, uh, you know, just because it comes up in conversation, sometimes people ask you, you know, what are you doing for Mother's Day? That kind of stuff. When I talked about those things, it was... It was difficult because I was always so interested in keeping everybody else kind of comfortable. So I, I never liked talking about those things just for that reason. When in fact, I, I probably would have appreciated a space in which I could have thought about death or about this kind of process. You know, after you lose someone, you're so busy thinking about your grief. It's, it's, it's actually kind of sad how little I knew about the industry before that. So uh, I don't want to go on too long about my stuff. I kind of want to fade in and out of me versus the game. Not versus, but me in the game. Me in the game. So this is a prep room where you will prepare bodies for burials and viewings. Because the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you are just going to clean the body. Click on the sponge and drag it over to the body to clean it. So the sponge... So yeah, immediately, this feels kind of strange, you know, games don't usually cover something like this. Uh, it's like, you know, usually we're like, oh, games are supposed to be fun, right? And this isn't fun, but it is challenging. I am really challenged right now. That's it, you're done. Mrs. Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of dressing and putting her in the casket. It's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's funeral. You are responsible for taking care of the deceased's body, but it's also important to pay your respects to their loved ones. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. I have to stop stuttering. I'm sorry. I just do that. I, I had a um, speech impediment when I was younger, and so it, I guess it just kind of comes back when I'm feeling something emotional. But as you can see, yeah, this game, what did I do? I read emails, and then I like dragged a thing back and forth. No real challenge here. No skills needed. All you need is to read and to feel. That's where this gameplay is actually happening. Uh, but I am being really challenged right now. Uh, death anxiety wise, thinking about my mother and the extra punch that her last name, the, the body's, the person's last name, sorry, was, is my last name. So yeah, at the funeral. Yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? Seems strange to be using a chemical that's known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do with leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. Haha, <laughs> stop it, don't make me laugh right now. I think that's, it's, people are very awkward at funerals, though I would have to say I, I wouldn't really know. I could imagine people are awkward at funerals. We didn't actually have a funeral for my mother just because financially how things were. Mommy, I'm hungry. Where can we go? When can we go? <laughs> I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. I think I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. I think this is probably a pretty realistic uh, depiction of what conversations are like, where it's not all, you know, devastating emotional grief. People kind of talk around the matter and try to try to just kind of circumvent it a little bit. And sometimes you just, I guess I would 
imagine you wouldn't be so close to the person that you would have much to say. She would have hated these paintings. She was so particular. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. That's... Yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah. Again, it's... It's so strange, the, the topic of death. And that's actually one of the reasons I really like this game, because it is, it's all about death positivity. Um, and before I talk to our, our last guy here, I just want to say death positivity. That's, I know it sounds like, wait, positive? Like, yay, death? No, uh, death positivity is more like um, feeling that it's okay to talk about death. We have a lot of social pressure to ignore death in conversation or to just say like, okay, that's enough, or to change the subject. We get really awkward, just how society, our society kind of is culturally. And when I say our, I do mean Northern American. Um, it is different for other cultures globally. Um, there isn't a lot of death positivity here. We, we don't tend to have these conversations, um, at least not comfortably or willingly. We usually don't small talk a lot of these things. At least that's what I was always taught. Yeah, see, there you go. It's like we get taught different things. We learn different things and we don't know really how to behave. I like that. Just pay respects and then we go. Okay, so I'm over the initial hurdle. October 11th, 10.09 a.m. I guess I've just reported in for another day. And I was cleaning, just taking care of stuff. So I'm over the initial hurdle. The immediate impact of death anxiety has kind of washed away a little bit. Um, that death anxiety I was feeling, and this is now when I'm gonna finally start quoting some media psychology research, that came from mortality salience. Uh, mortality salience is what happens or is what you call it when a bit of media or actually any situation in which you are made to think about mortality, it becomes more salient in the in the front of your mind. Um, that mortality salience, it sends all of us into a kind of, you know, we get some anxiety going on and there are actual um, psychological uh, things that we do even without knowing it in order to buffer that anxiety or to relieve that anxiety. And I'll talk about that after I look over these emails really quick. So the next job, you do a remarkable job, no small feet, grieving families, and exactly the most comfortable jobs. Okay, your next job is a man named Mr. Duval. An elderly man died of old age, nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to reach, uh, to hesitate to ask questions. Wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde's extremely dangerous. I don't need to tell you, but... I won't mother you too much. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, that mortality salience where- oh, I was supposed to respond again. Um, when we are made to think about death, the some of the things that we do do, uh, it's covered in what they- in uh, terror management theory. Oh, I'm all dressed up. Uh, terror management theory, you know, how to manage terror I mean, thinking about death, you, you do get a little scared or terrified. Uh, okay, so I'll just do this. Um, so what people might do in the face of thinking about death is look for distraction. I mean, we all do that. We all kind of look for distraction. Um, or if that doesn't work, we'll look for a symbolic validation or defense of ourselves because we're just trying to we're dealing with the terror. We want to feel like, you know, we don't have to think about it or it's not something we have to worry about, that we can be, um, we can live longer. It's not something to worry about right now. So research has shown that when you think about death, um, oh yeah, okay, shave. When you think about death, you want to like, that's interesting. You want to engage in life, prolonging life, lengthening uh, habits. So people who like, after this, I will probably want to go eat healthier. I'll want to exercise. I want to take better care of myself because of the anxiety I'm going through. Um, but after that, after it starts to set in, oh, you have to massage the body. Okay, rigor mortis. After, 
um, after it sets in, these thoughts, you're gonna, it, you or me, or everybody who goes through this, will start to go into distal defensive thinking, which is more like, oh, okay, eyeballs, deflate, click and drag, eye caps. Those are eye caps. Um, we're gonna be thinking about our worldview. You know, we start thinking about longer lasting, more uh, kind of social things. Our worldview, we want it to be like defended, you know, not, it's strange to explain like how we see the world is the way that it actually is. Just to reaffirm with ourselves that there's no threat, that everything's safe. Uh, we also focus on our self-esteem when we're trying to cope with thoughts about death. Uh, we want to feel that we're doing well in society and that we're, we're offering something to society. And lastly, we focus on our close relationships with others, you know, significant others and family and friends. I have to glue. So, I mean, I'm going through some of that right now where I am thinking about those things uh, to kind of buffer this anxiety. I am experiencing, I am getting pretty tired already. Which is, uh, I think because, you know, I am recording this as well. There's a lot of, there's a lot of complex things going on emotionally for me. The mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball into the mouth to give it shape. Keep it from opening, you'll need to suture it shut. Click and drag the needle. Click and drag lotion over the body. Click and drag lotion over the body to moisturize it. Wow, you know, this is really interesting learning about all this. Removing blood and replacing it with preserving scalp, uh, chemicals. Click and drag scalpel over the neck. Oh, wow. Gonna need a tube. Really? Wow. Click on the canula. That's a trocar. What's the canu canula? Canula? Uh, drag it to the carotid artery. This? Oh. Grab some additional tubing. Oh. Click the button to turn on. To evenly distribute the chemicals, massage. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is pretty intense. But you know what? It's actually... There's something about this as well that's... Because it's so calming, and it's, you know, the, the colors are calming, the musics are calming... The musics are... <laughs> the music's calming. There is something about this that is actually... Pleasant? in a way. I mean, it's it's strange. And it is um, strange as in I'm not used to this. I'm not used to thinking about it. It does cause some anxiety. But at the same time, I'm being kind of lulled into appreciating it and appreciating being able to learn these things. And I guess I've just gotten so tired of not being able to think about or talk about death or my experiences with it that actually being able to share it here and to think about it uh need to drain the organs the trocar the trocar um ooh. um being able to talk about it i'm actually getting this opportunity to process some of the things i i'm feeling and have felt my experiences Mike will take care of Duval's, Mr. Duval's makeup and dressing and putting him in his casket. It's time to attend the funeral. So yeah, I, I do feel, I'm gonna keep playing this, but I actually, after this funeral, I am gonna end the video just cause it's so much, but this, I, I do feel a kind of benefit from this even now. Uh, and I will include some details down at the bottom about how thinking about these things can lead to well-being. I know I've talked about anxiety this whole time, but just being able to process this, to get it out there, uh, and to have this kind of safe mental space to consider and think about death, it's actually, it's been super helpful. And I am getting this kind of eudaimonic lift 
from it uh, came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? It does. One minute you're laughing, having fun, and then poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about it for too long. Like staring at the sun, I just start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. There you go. Yeah, that exact feeling. So weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah. Wow, you know, those are the thoughts that are going through my head, that have gone through my head so many times. It's nice to see it represented. This is a really death-positive game. It, it makes me feel that I'm not alone in these thoughts, not alone in these feelings, and that kind of, that tired fuzziness. It's really validating, and I really appreciate it, which is why I really wanted to play it for this channel. Anyways, so strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different for different family members. I can't remember. I haven't gone to many traditional funerals, so mostly white, but like definitely not red, no matter what. Oh, okay. He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. <laughs> a kid on his, on his game, humming to himself. You know, I mean, that's true, and it's really not something to look down on you know when you're that young you're not gonna it's not gonna hit you the same way when you're older it's a different process for everyone he will go through what he goes through it's to me it's not actually disrespectful unless they're like blatantly being rude or something like i don't know but that to me i i would understand you know children oh do i need a okay children uh do what they do you know they're they're gonna process it differently it's gonna take longer it's gonna maybe take a while like years for it to, to hit them a certain way anyways it's december now but you know what i think i will call it here call the game here because i have gone through a lot of the research um i will say that this game it is very helpful you know and i really recommend playing it through completion it really gives you a chance to think about these things when maybe nobody else in your life or no other situation or mental space, physical space will allow you to think about these things without feeling uncomfortable or like you're making other people uncomfortable. Anyways, so I highly recommend this. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me, this emotional journey. Um, I hope that it offered you something. I hope maybe you're interested in trying out this game or games like it, or you learned something about death positivity. Uh, if you have any suggestions for any games like this or any other kinds of different games, please let me know. I'd be happy to hear them. And yeah, until next time, happy playing.